Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. This is the second part of the interview with Dr. Jahan Zeeb Ansari about practicing medicine in Canada. Uh, now the second part of this discussion would be options available for the IMGs for supervised practice. So okay. there are two different kind of options uh, that, that we have as a clinician in, in Canada as far as Manitoba is concerned. Uh, so, uh, so the first option, uh, the, the most I think the most well known portion is the residency training program uh, which is done through CARMS and uh, I think most of our viewers know, know about that program. Mm, again the website is carms.ca. Uh, uh, it, uh, it has all the details into it and the residency program is uh, basically a structured program uh, depending on the specialty that you want to go in. Uh, how many years does it comprises of and, and you know all the details regarding that so i am in family medicine it's uh, it's it's a two-year uh, program the basic training the core training consists of two years and uh, and like internal medicine is basic core training is about a, for three years and then you have different options after that so the CARMS is uh, the main program uh, after which if you go, th if you enter into this program, if you complete your desired year, uh, years of training, then you can practice as an independent physician anywhere across Canada. So, uh, and as, uh, as everyone know that it is the most competitive program, uh, the most difficult program uh, to, to, to get in, just because there are hundreds and thousands of people across the Canada applying to that program. Now when I say across the Canada, no one who anyone who is a permanent resident or a Canadian citizen can apply to this program. <coughs> None of the international people can apply to this program. Should be in Canada? Yes, yeah, you should have, you should not be physically present here in Canada, but you should be either a permanent resident, a landed immigrant, so or can a apply. Canadian citizen yes. uh, to apply to this program. All right. And uh, it has a bunch of different uh, fields that you can apply in. There are different statistics available on the, on the website. Uh, for, for different programs uh, where IMGs match the most to and by matching I just mean is to to get into a program uh, to get accepted to a program yes. that the in competition our terms is very hard. matching oh yeah the competition is very the hard. competition is very, very hard uh, but you know we're going to talk about the different steps that we have to go through uh, I went through the CARMS pathway so mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah I got matched through that so I, I know some details about that I'm going to also discuss some other programs that I don't know much about but uh, the Facebook group that I've created I'm trying to gather more and more people from different programs in that group mm -hmm. so people can gather there and ask if they have any questions specific to that particular program okay. so uh, so that's the CARMS program um, the, the second option for the IMGs uh, is the for I, I would say for the family physicians or the general practitioners is the MLP IMG and MLP is basically the medical licensure program for IMGs or for general practitioners. Now, the, there are a bunch of requirements uh, for uh, the eligibility requirements for this program, but the major one that you should know of is to have at least 12 months of consecutive uh, independent pra practice as a family physician or, or a general physician in the past five years. So this is the main experience requirement. Uh, for, for this particular program. In addition to that, there are a bunch of other requirements at IELTS, a uh, couple of exams, and uh, obviously your internship and your degree and their verification has to be done before you can apply to this program. And obviously the details uh, will just uh, show the website uh, on uh, this video as well. You can follow, uh, it's, it's a University of Manitoba website and it has details of all the programs that I'm talking about right now. So starting from point one, from eligibility to the entire process of that application, everything is present on the University of Manitoba's website. And the, the third program which is available is the Practice Ready Assessment for, for Family Physicians, PRAFP. Uh, this is the third stream uh, where, uh, where the family physician or general practitioner, uh, practitioners can apply to. And the basic difference from the MLP IMG program of this program is uh, your experience. So for this pr particular program, you should have at least three years of uh, consecutive uh, experience as a family physician or a general practitioner in the past five years. So you should have a more 
extra two year experience to be eligible for this program uh -huh. and uh, it's, it's a very quick program uh, you don't have to go through a formal training program and one thing I forgot to mention about MLP IMG program is that it has a one year of, of training program or like a very short residency for one year and then you have a one year of supervised training uh, but you work as an independent physician during that uh, second year and then you have to uh, designate some of the uh, uh, I think two to three years for return of service because mm -hmm. you have a contract with the government because they're accepting you as uh, physicians mm -hmm. so now this uh, you have to sign a contract with the government like once you are done with your training you have to go into rural areas uh, to to provide medical care there. There. yes to oh, serve so. there and now the return uh, and it's called as return of service okay uh, so whatever government has invested in you uh, you have to pay back pay back yeah <laughs> and, and it's it's your and morally that and it's a acceptable duty as well acceptable. Yeah. and as I see I mean most of the doctors they ask I mean can I do the residency where can I work I don't mind to be anywhere but I want to practice exactly no everyone thinks like that you know when you are here uh, when you're struggling to get into these programs we all say you know even if they would send us to North Pole we are ready to go there we <laughs> just want to get into the system yes. so so it's pretty true yes. and 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 the final program that is available it is for the specialists and it's called as practice ready assessment specialty practice program now this this uh, specific program uh, is only intended for the specialist for apart from the family physician is it like Dr. Iqbal uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I know a psychiatrist too. He also came through this program. So, so there's a bunch of eligibility requirements for this program too. Uh, if you satisfy the requirements, if you have already done a residency accredited uh, by, uh, by the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Manitoba, and you have some qualifications from outside Canada that are acceptable to the college here, uh, they do some sort of assessment. I, I personally don't know anything about it, uh, but again, all the details are present on the link uh, that has been uh, that has been showed uh, the University of Manitoba's website uh, for that. So, so basically, these are uh, the four available programs that the the graduates or uh, the experienced physician can get in, uh, can get into, and they can finally practice as independent clinicians. The program which the University of Manitoba does for one year. And I read about it before that it takes about 20 to 22 doctors and they serve yes. in the rural yeah. areas. Yeah, they, they take about uh, 20, uh, 20 people uh, per year. Yes. Yes. And uh, in that program, uh, in addition to being a permanent resident and, uh, and a Manitoba. Canadian citizen, yeah, uh, they prefer their own uh, Manitoban, uh, Manitoban residents. Yes. Uh, having said that, that doesn't mean that they cannot accept any people from outside. I understand. Or, uh, people from all across provinces accept, uh, are, are, uh, are applying can to apply, the program. Yes. Yeah, they can apply. And they do get accepted. Uh, a, a big number of the 20 uh, people are from the other provinces. Okay. So, but uh, if you're an established Manitoban resident, they will prefer you. If you have a similar qualification, that's what our assumption is. It becomes like a priority. Exactly. Understood. Yeah. Understood. So, so yeah, so that's the that program uh, that you, most of the people. That's know. very good. I mean, the information which you've just mentioned is important, especially for doctors. I know that doctors are seeking this information. The point is always the question for the doctors. When I come to Canada or to Manitoba, mm -hmm. can I practice my job even I'm experienced? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was working as a surgeon, a doctor, mm -hmm. I had in a hospital, a manager of a hospital. What can I do when I come to Canada? This is the main question. Always. Exactly. And, and you know, I personally believe that whenever uh, you, whatever profession you are from, you know, we should ha have our homework done before we go anywhere. Exactly. Uh, things are difficult here. Things are extremely difficult for, for the international medical graduates. I have seen people who, came, who went back home. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you know, as I'll just add something onto it, like people go home to get some experience too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, if, if I just add my a little bit of story, uh, my story into it. It's important that, because people want to learn. Yeah. So if you have something to tell, 
just let them know <laughs> yeah because uh, this year uh, when i was in fact it was 2017 uh, the end of 2017 when i was applying to carms and i was preparing my file and everything and i was obviously pre working hard for it and preparing very hard for it so when i when i applied to it in the first round so there are two rounds of applications okay. so you apply to the first round the first result is announced in march okay so i didn't get accepted in the first round okay. so i was pretty disappointed i was oh. dejected and you know it's there was so much into it you know everyone works pressure. hard. exactly <laughs> yeah, there's so much pressure <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, you have been working. You have you have studied so hard in the medical school for like five years or more, and you have traveled to at least to an entirely new country. So it it was difficult. So I was I was very sad uh, after that, you know. But but Alhamdulillah, you know, I kept my calm. I kept working hard. I I, I reapplied. You didn't lose hope. No, no. It's I, important I, to keep positive. Yeah, and and you know, I'll just add on to it. Like, if you have hope. It, it all depends what your intention is you know when you when you ask something from Allah it all depends what you're asking for if, if you're asking for a small and petty thing that anyone can get you might get it or you might not you might not care about it but if you have a, a higher aim or, or, or something larger than life you know and then then even Allah makes things easier for you it's so important to not to lose hope yes it's and uh, not to lose yeah, so Alhamdulillah, I kept my hope. Uh, my, my, I had a good family support. You know, I, uh, they kept me going, and I applied ag it again. My my second match result was uh, due on 11th of April, 2018, and on 10th of April, I had already registered uh, back in Saudi Arabia because my, my half of my family lives there. Uh, they have, I've already reg registered in the Saudi Council. Uh, the Saudi board, I've already registered, registered for their exam because I was going back. <laughs> I was going to Saudi Arabia, not back, but to Saudi Arabia uh, to get some experience. Yes. Because my plan B was the, the second program, that one year program that you were talking about, the MLP IMG program. Yes. I had no experience for that. Okay. So I was ready to go back. I had done all of my exams. So it's good to go back. You know, if your aim is to finally come here and practice, it's good to go back. Mm. But it's it takes a lot of patience and a lot of sabr, you know, you just have to wait and give it some time oh and my. work hard. Brother, I am sure that there are doctors do not know two-thirds of the information which you mentioned. They don't know. They don't know the path. Mm -hmm. They only know that they have to register for their qualifications mm -hmm. to be, I mean, their credentials. Mm -hmm. But after that, Mm -hmm. They don't know. That. Yeah. And Alhamdulillah that you are here today to tell people your story. Yeah, it's very important. Exactly. And if I think about myself in, in 2013 or 2014, when I was a fresh graduate, when I did my internship, I didn't know any of this, what I know right now. So yes. some things I've learned by my, uh, during my own struggle and mm. something you learn from meeting great people around you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's okay. So, as this is part two, which we are ending now, mm -hmm. is there something you want to say in the last minute? Um, of this no, part, I think, uh, yeah, no, that was it. Okay, do you want me to uh, give a concluding statement? Uh, do we have time? If not, like, uh, 10 seconds. Uh, Okay. Okay. So I, I mean, so so these were the options um, that were specific to the people or specific to the uh, uh, the, uh, the the program that can lead to independent clinical practice.